Okay, this is the meeting of the Raleigh Conservation Commission of March 26, 2013. I hereby call the meeting to order under authority of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, the Town of Raleigh's Wetlands Protection Bylaw and the Stormwater Management and Erosion Control Bylaw. I will now call the roll for attendance. Robert Carpenter, absent. Dave DeMonaco, here. Bob Garner, absent. Judy Keyes, here. Sam Strife, absent right now. Kirk Turner, here. Doug Watson, <coughs> I'm here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum present. <coughs> All righty. Um, have some, some things to sign. Yes. Yeah. If we could we also have some there. vendor bills and then maybe proceed to the draft yeah. minutes that yeah. have been okay. distributed. Uh, first is a reimbursement request for expenditures for office supplies. These are the two backup receipts for your right. initial one. <coughs> and then we've received an invoice for technical review services from HL Graham Associates. For this was one thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. This is for the stormwater bylaw review for the carriage pines. Car the residences at carriage pines. I get reimbursed by the applicant gave us the check, which this is being drawn. On. I, there's a little more than that, actually. So I think you're right. Yes, there's. So for your initialing, if you could initial Mr. Graham's receipt. And invoice, excuse me. <coughs> and yes, so the next submittal is authorization for a check to go back to Carriage Pines right. for the remaining balance of the funds that were in the technical review account. We're Plus whatever interest. We're sure they're done, right? Yes. As as we've, we've, we've issued the permit. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. There shouldn't be any follow-up on that. So let's just go this way. And I don't know whether this is necessary or not, but if you want to just initial next to where I did the um, subtraction from the initial balance to show that $60 plus whatever interest will be returned. Oh, okay. This is to the treasurer. Yes. Yeah. That's perfect work. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. Uh, distributed uh, minutes from the last meeting. Um, full disclosure, only the first page and a half has been approved. Okay.
Bottom of page two, um, I think it's um, I'm not sure why the word Rowley is in the first line, but if we're going to have the town, it should be Ipswich. I'm sorry. Bottom of page two, discussion we have with oh, Rowley no. attorney Ross. Very good. I don't usually. Yeah. No, I don't fine. usually put no. geographic tags with yeah. legal yeah. counsel. Yeah. <laughs> Although you know what, we ought to put which Ross because there are two of them, so it should oh. be Arthur. Okay. His son is also in the same office. So, so many. He did. That's true, and that's maybe that's where that came from. Yeah. yeah. Is this accurate here? <coughs> Not quite. Meets and bounds should be meets, M E T E S. Mm. Well, that wasn't part of the story. Maybe that's a good catch. I'm sorry, what page are you on? The top, top, the top of page three. three, first line of page three. Okay. Did council in fact verify that it meets and I thought that was a problem. We didn't have a meets and bounds. <coughs> description. Well, this, yeah, that's all <coughs> included. In recent property acquisitions. Yeah, I, I had dropped, I dropped something there. I don't, I think faster than I type. So. Had dirt, had, let's see, suggested that a meets and bounds description uh, along with the survey plan of the parcel would be required. How about that? That makes no sense. We suddenly switched tenses um, here. Well, it's not terribly important. But now we're no, no, I've corrected. I do that all the time. I keep phasing out between the future and yeah, the past doing and present. <coughs> past up to enforcement order 141. And then we're moving into the present. <coughs> to enforcement order 141. Where are we? Oh. You relate <coughs> oh, instead of related. Yes, you're right. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So do you, before we get to Judy's point, do we have the language for the um, previous item? I don't know. Why don't you? Do what you I was suggesting is uh, starting from the first top of the first line. From the first line of page three, yep. recent property acquisition situations, town council had suggested that a meets respelled and bounds description, comma, along with a surveyed plan of the parcel, comma, should be required. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yes. Okay. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. <coughs> So now we get to Judy's point, which is we have switched to the present tense here. Yeah, well, I corrected that. Okay. So For the word related. Related, related, and then in the last sentence we discussed and decided. Discussed, yeah. Well, and the same correction needs to be applied then to the 406 enforcement too. Right. <coughs> And decided. Did you get the decided? Discussed and decided. <coughs> to yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. And then related. Yep. Appears. going to be the same thing again, too. Yeah. And then we get to presented here at the end. Discussed and decided. Where are you? And 406. Oh, I need to go back to 4141. Okay. okay. When you're through. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in the 1, 2, 
three. Fourth line down is a hyphen. I just think there should be a period and start a new sentence. Third or fourth line down, depending on where you're <laughs> stopping counting. Before the word failure. Well, I, un I understand that, but that is just <coughs> copied out of the um, listing on the enforcement order. I, well, it's not in quotes. I don't even know that it even had a sentence structure. So however you but that's why that's why the uh, the hyphen is in there just to express that there's <coughs> just a collection of various violations. So however you want it. Well, maybe done. if we said um, after the word bylaw as follows, colon something like that. Mm. Would that work? Yes. But you got not. Okay. I think probably in both paragraphs it would be commissions inspection. Commissioners. Yes. <coughs> Third line up oh, in the yeah. same paragraph. Yeah, so second line up at the bottom. Well, you did say you hadn't proved them, so we're not right. going to hold you to the usual high standard here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, how, how, Commission. what, what is being corrected and where is it? Okay, in uh, 141, yeah. Uh, eight. Seventh line. The, the image sentence? Um, images, Correct. yeah. Documenting the current site conditions for the commission's inspection. Okay. And the same in the next. Well, yes. I don't Copied and pasted for both things. Yes. Okay. <coughs> no, I think we got it. The, the administrative, the very last line, mm -hmm. I think, uh, crosses the Conservation Commission open space parcel. There's a missing T. See it? Very last line of the page. Second word. It says he instead of the. I apparently have a different pagination or something. Oh, uh, you do. You've got that. more lines there than we do. One, two, three, four. Right over here. That word. Does it say V or he? Oh. Close to the top. And then the first line that it forced water. First line of page four. Fifth line commission instead of commissioners. Yep. And let's see, next line I think instead of I we want Bayslac, right? Yep. Executive session, the last line. Exec executive session closed from the beginning. <coughs> Since you, you um, went into the roll call vote on opening, on going into it, it seems to me it'd be helpful to say executive session closed on 
a roll call vote and the meeting adjourned. I don't think you have to go through <coughs> eyes over again since these aren't technically the minutes of a closed session. Right. Yeah, I suppose because we have to do it that way. <coughs> from what I understand. Uh, actually, what I did was I called up the selectman's office and asked them how they did it and they emailed over to me. And so I basically just plagiarized it. So we just you know, wanted, to know how, I wanted to know how to, how to do it in the, in the open. So, so. But that's, yeah, that just clarifies that it's done on the roll call. Vote, so. That certainly adding detail does not detract from anything. Okay. Anything else? On the the motion to approve. There are motion to approve the minutes. So move. And a second. Aye. Second. What you mean? Yeah, second, yeah. Sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to be yourself. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. One last bit of administrative. Here's my uh, conflict of interest certification. Oh, thank you. Which you can get over to the town clerk if you would. A reminder to members who have not done it, you got to do it. Again. April 1st. Yeah. Again. Every two years. Yeah. Okay. Every two years. My computer is giving me trouble. You're probably. welcome to come into the office at any time. I've got a second computer in here. And, yeah. It's not. I didn't think the website worked very well at all. I was kind of disappointed. I don't know if anybody else had that experience, but <coughs> it worked on the but the questions were tricky the first the first okay. three or four. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, 845 item. Whoops, how about 745? Uh-huh. 745 <laughs> item. Well that'll be 45 item. The so 745 item. Uh, this is a legal notice of the Raleigh Conservation Commission in accordance with the Wetland Protection Act, General Laws 131, Section 40, as amended, Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw. A public meeting will be held on Tuesday, March 26, 2013, at 7.45 p.m. at Room 5, Town Hall Annex, 39 Central Street, to consider a request for determination of applicability application filed by Nanette Hadley Street, uh, Street St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church for, propose, for proposed soil evaluations for design of a replacement sewage system, possibly within the 100-foot buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands at 202 Main Street, Map 24, Parcel 138 in Rowling. Hi. Good evening. For the record, my name is John Morin. I work for the Nevi Morin Group. Okay. We're here tonight representing the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Boston. Uh, Nanette Hadley is also here tonight. Hello. Uh, we're here for the property located at 202 Main Street, St. Mary's Church. We're here for a request of determination of applicability for soil testing out on the property uh, located at 202 Main Street. What you see in purple here, Main Street's on the bottom of the plan. Purple is the outside perimeter of the property. And what you see in green is the actual wetland resource areas that we had delineated by DeRosa Environmental. We got two series of... Um, <coughs> of wetland resource areas on the property. We have bordering vegetated wetlands, and then we have ox book, I mean ox pasture brook out in the back. So we've got the 100 foot wetland buffer that you see here in green. And it, as you can see, it kind of traverses up and around through the site. And then you get the 200 foot riverfront area associated with the brook out in the back. Existing church is right here. Rectory, detached garage, uh, those are the structures that are out on the property. Again, as you can see, the wetland tails down the, the southwesterly side of the property, kind of climbs back up again and then back out. Uh, based on the size of the church, location of the wetlands, we do have a large parking lot out in the back. We do anticipate high water tables with the soil testing, so any opportunity well, first opportunity is to test out front as far away from the wetlands as possible. Mm -hmm. Putting the septic out in the back isn't going to be feasible because I think we'll lose too much parking. Mm -hmm. So what you see before you is we do have a few areas that are outside the 100-foot buffer, 
but I don't believe they're going to be large enough to sustain the septic system for the church. So we're going to need to do some soil testing within the 100-foot buffer. I feel that we will be back with a filing of a notice of intent at some point with the repair design for the church and potentially for the repair design for the rectory as well. Are they on the separate systems now? Yes. Okay. Yep. The church septic, is act, as I stated before, is actually under the parking lot. Okay. And the rectory system is right out in the back right here. Uh, again, our, what we're looking at is obviously as far out of the, away from the wetlands as possible. We get a couple of spots. We get this section here and then another section out on the other um, southerly corner, south easterly corner of the property over in that location. The areas where we're proposing to test are all manicured lawns, landscape areas. There is an area back in here which is actually old degraded pavement. Uh, there should be no issues with runoff. The areas where the soil testing is being conducted is very uh, shallow and uh, slope. <coughs> and the soil testing, we should be in and out of there in a day and they'll back blade the testing <coughs> afterwards uh, as they do on a normal um, test pit. You know, we'll, we'll have a uh, probably a backhoe test pits that are 10 feet deep. And like I said, we'll probably be conducting, you know, maybe five, six, or seven test pits out there, depending on what we find for soils. Uh, at this point, I'll open it up to questions from the commission. Um, did you see Brent's memo? Yeah, he oh. sent that over today. I read through that, and uh, it all looks pretty boilerplate. I agree with him. I doubt, uh, I think we'll find that the need for erosion control, we won't need it. Right. And you had a septic failure. Excuse me? What's, what's the reason why you're doing this? They were having issues with, it hasn't failed on the surface of the ground, but they're having issues inside the facility. Okay. So the thought is, um, depending on what you find and what you can design, maybe make a combined septic system. The whole intent is to try to keep the septic separate. <coughs> they're kind of two separate uses. I really don't, the church itself is going to be a large use to begin with. Right. So the goal is really to keep the two uses separate and have two individual septics okay. out on the site. If you can find room. Right. Yeah. Are there um, any issues currently with the rectory system that you're aware of? That, there was a title, they inspected it. I believe the inspector said he had to come back and re-inspect it. I don't know if that's been done or not. Okay. <coughs> Brent, anything you'd like to add to your memo? Um, no, no, nothing to add. I guess this really isn't particularly germane to all this, but I'm a little confused as to the relationship between this and, and St. Mary's and Georgetown, and, and I have the impression that they, the communicants of those churches go back and forth between these two. And I, you know, what are the long-term plans for? I don't expect you to know that. <laughs> I do. Go ahead, please. I do. I knew this question was going to come. Um, I have. Uh, in the, we merged in July, well, June 30th, 2006. We are one parish now, and from the very beginning, the idea is, what do we do with two buildings? Um, so we looked at everything we had, and the. We have talked about whether or not Raleigh, the smaller church, which is Raleigh, would stay open. I have talked to every single department at the Archdiocese that has anything to do with this, and we have been very clear marching orders. Raleigh stays. We are not selling the church under any circumstances, and you are to grow the parish. Our <coughs> septic plan has, our, the septic issues have prevented us from really utilizing the hall, which has kept us from having more than one mass on a weekend, which has kept us from doing a lot of things. So we didn't have the money. Now we have the money. We're going to fix the septic, and we're, not, we're just not going to. The, the congregation itself in the, that worships in Raleigh has been growing, especially over the past three years. Um, the, the income outgo has actually been very good, and it takes care of itself. There's no reason why we would sell Raleigh, and I was told that we shouldn't talk about that anymore. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and that was so you'll I, be separating in the near future from Georgetown. Well, hopefully, um, with the 
with our new pope, we'll have such a run on stuff. We'll have a That's plethora right. of yeah. uh, priests and yeah. able to do that. And thousands of Catholics. <laughs> thousands of Catholics raising up priests, and then we'll be able to right. once again have individual parishes. But as it stands right now, that wouldn't be the plan. Okay. Thank you. It's a very good thank explanation. You. And thank you for coming to just to share that with us. Hopefully some of those priests are women. <laughs> well, <there's laughs> we aren't voting on that. <laughs> <laughs> Francis hasn't asked my help for my help on that either. He, he hasn't, no. <laughs> well, I'm sure when he sees the uh, TV show for tonight, he'll he'll be right on the phone to you. <clears throat> yeah. Um, any other questions? Anybody? Um, in that case, I think what I need is a motion, let me see, to close the hearing and issue a negative determination, option number three, with the conditions stated in the memo, uh, which are, be good, a good practice to start reading this. Um, uh, the Rowley Conservation Commission shall, and its agents shall have the right to enter and inspect the property at any time. Temporary erosion control used if needed to prevent erosion. Three is inspection of erosion control by staff and RCC if needed. Four is soil evaluation holes to be backfilled and stabilized utilizing mulching and reseeding, uh, preferably on the same day they are excavated. Uh, five is erosion control to be properly maintained if installed until final stabilization. And six is notification of the RCC office upon completion. Which, um, are all acceptable to the applicant as I understand it. So the back, we'll the back filling is particularly important because you've got a grammar school right across the street and kids had fallen in one of those yes. holes that they weren't okay. properly attended to. Well, that's, that's a good point. Um, so do I have a motion to that effect? So move. And is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? The motion carries. And thank you. And we'll probably be seeing you not too long. Thank you very much. <laughs> John, could you delay your departure, please? Sure. Get yourself a copy. <coughs> and the record should reflect that Commissioner Strait has arrived. But did not vote on that. Well, he done that. That's right. It's a fine line. If something changes, forget it. You don't get it. Right. Oh, it's not that old, but no, I don't. I don't look at it. He's got gray hair. Huh? He's probably yeah. using vision <laughs> for
is the 8 o'clock item. <coughs> and this is a legal notice of the Rally Conservation Commission. In accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, General Laws 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Rally Wetlands Protection Bylaw, a public meeting will be held on Tuesday, March 26, 2013, at 8 p.m. at Room 5, Town Hall Annex, 39 Central Street to consider a request for determination of applicability application filed by Kirk B. Weatherby for proposed demolition and construction of a 24 by 30 foot attached garage and foundation, possibly within the DEP approved groundwater protection area zone two, all at 6 Tenney Road on map five, parcel 48, lot one in Raleigh. Hi. Hi, Kirk Weatherby. Hi, welcome. Good evening, folks. Yep. Um, I'm just looking here to get permission to fix my hose. <laughs> you happen to have the least two press? I do. Great. But yeah, she Thank you so um, much. That was requested. Was there a memo over it? Or am I just missing it? I'm sorry? Is there a memo? <coughs> um, no, but okay. there is the proposed uh, condition sheet. Oh, that's what that's we have. Yes, okay. I got it. Right. Yeah, that's the same one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sir, have you seen um, this page? Special well, no, that, Yeah. Uh, no. That was just done um, five minutes before yeah, okay. the just, meeting started. I think it's yeah. helpful if you take a look at it, because mm -hmm. it's kind of going to be the basis of our discussion. That's what uh, Mr. Baselak is going to be right. suggesting as how we thank you. Well, we also how we um, might go about doing this. We also, because of the situation um, with Mr. Weathersby's structure, we also on authorization with the chair and vice chair in consultation with the agent. I issued an emergency uh, right. certificate to allow the demolition to proceed uh, on his structure. Um, well, on a portion, basically, basically focused on the garage and. Apparently, when his residence was constructed prior to Mr. Weatherby's ownership, apparently in developing the site, they buried stumps and other mm -hmm. organic material right directly below where the foundation uh, from his um, garage attaches to his family room, which was provided in, in some of the sketches. So. <coughs> When I inspected the site and to you know, just get the lay of the land and everything, it was clearly evident, um, standing towards the back center <coughs> of Mr. Weatherby's property, that you could visually see that the back corner where the garage attached to the family room mm -hmm. seemed to be the, the area of the most pronounced subsidence. Like in there. This is the road. Yeah, yeah. actually. Over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a, a this roof is, desk. This is, this is the main house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, back this right. here, the main house is fine. Yeah. The attachment uh, was done, I don't know when. I didn't do any research on it, but mm -hmm. this room here, the two car garage, and the screen room was all added on later. Okay. I bought it this way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and this whole section. Uh, like right in here. Uh huh. Um, in our investigation, why my house was uh, collapsing, basically. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we had dug a, a hole back behind here, and and found that there were stumps underneath the foundation, and <coughs> basically m my house is in collapse mode, and <coughs> I got permission through the conservation on an emergency basis. And we've already taken down the garage and already been removed. Okay, yeah. yeah. As far as uh, number five uh, on your list of special conditions, <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, you agree with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, for the, for the camera, happen. that's Trust the me. requirement for clean fill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's I a agree. requirement. <laughs> you agree. I wish yeah. you guys were around then. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. And they built it, you know, because this wouldn't be happening to me right now. Jeez. Have any idea who the builder was? You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I, you know, no, I, not. I, I, I can't. I have, I have no recourse. No. I, I talked to lawyers, and my insurance company won't carry 
any uh, uh, obligation to, to for anything. So because you did this, is, this is all on me. Yeah. yeah. Too much time has lapsed uh, between sure. when I bought it and it actually started to fail. <clears throat> Now, the commission should also know that um, it came as kind of a surprise to Mr. Weatherby, and he was very patient and uh, cooperative in, in working with me that his property was located in our Zone 2 uh, drinking water area because he isn't really in close proximity to any other wetland resource areas, although there is the isolated pond uh, that's located in that area, and it's Without my entering onto other property, I couldn't necessarily ascertain as to whether the 100 foot buffer zone from the fringing edge well, of well, well, wetlands comes The contraction is uh, far beyond, you know, the 100 foot. If there was a, you know, if I was in, in, in need of being in, outside the buffer, it's, it's well beyond that. No, I just, that. I just meant as to whether it even extends onto your property or not. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. You know, okay. Not because yeah, all ir this, irrespective yeah. of where the location of the uh, proposed was, uh, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and the uh, pond right here. This is the pond. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and, and I don't have my glasses on, sorry. But I mean, this is, this is pretty far, yeah. You know, right, but I'm just commenting as to whether the 100 foot buffer zone might possibly even come up and nick this back corner yeah. within yeah, but in the woods. But irres really irres yeah, yeah, but irrespective of this, Construction work. Irrespective I mean? of that, you are definitely in the recharge area yeah. of our drinking water wells. As you well surprised me. Yeah, yeah, which is the only reason we're standing here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. basically, he came in looking for a sign off <coughs> on his permit, and I ended up um, asking him to come sit down and work with me. And we prepared his RDA <coughs> application on the spot yep. in order to uh, meet the advertising deadlines and stuff as well as to get things rolling so that we could also uh, entertain uh, the emergency <coughs> certificate because he had things all arranged for um, your brother, is it, I think? Your I brother to come in and do the demolition. The, uh, and, uh, I actually have a, yeah. uh, a, a house moving company coming to, uh, we're, we're trying to save my family room. We, yeah. we lost the garage. Is, Nothing I can do about that. That's gone. That's gone. Yeah. See you later. Um, <clears throat> um, and of course the foundation and everything, but we're gonna we're gonna shore up uh, the existing family room and screen room and trying to save what I can save, you know. Yeah. I don't wanna lose it all. It's all no. already been remodeled, this perm has been pulled and, and it's been already done over, you know, and it's it's kind of a disaster right now. <laughs> but um, it's hard uh, to see why it's been pretty really helpful. It's really hard to see why that builder felt the need to do that. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the questions uh, can go on and on. Yeah. I, 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 in my own uh, belief, it, it was the original builder that built the main house sure. that buried the stumps there, and then when they added on, they may or may mm -hmm. not have known that this was in existing condition. And they built it anyway. Yeah. You know, there's a, there was actually I have pictures and video of where you could see the footing go right over some of the stumps. You know, so I mean, somebody knew they were there. Whether they told the homeowner they were building it for, uh, or if he was doing it himself, I, I I have no idea. You know, it's just too many years have passed. I'm just stuck with it, and I got to fix it. Yeah. Probably no small consolation, but you're better off than that guy in Florida. Uh, <laughs> you're not the only person that said that, and I agree. <laughs> have, you, have you had any concern from My wife might have a little issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> have you had, had, had any concern expressed from neighbors who might be curious as to whether there's stumps buried on their property or not? Uh, you know what? The question hasn't come up. They all stop by and gawk. They think I'm insane anyway, so I, I don't know. You know, <laughs> one of my neighbors did stop by and say, "What are you doing, replacing the windows?" Yeah, I wish. Yeah, you wish. Yeah, <laughs> I was taking them out to salvage them, you know, so I could possibly reuse them. Whether I, I mean, they're all brand new six years ago. Whether I can use them or not, 
I, I don't know. They didn't come out very well. Well, I don't see any reason we need to hold you up here. Does anyone have any questions, or Brent, do you have anything to add to the? Well, discussion? no. I actually, I actually would like to point out that I think we. I mean, I hope Mr. Weatherby would agree that we actually, um, even though this permitting process came as a surprise to him, that we've been able uh, to work with him. And I don't think you've been inconvenienced at all oh, in, no, no, in no, regards no, to no, the, been, the project he's been proceeding. He's very, uh, very yeah, helpful. So. Uh, matter of fact, you know, it, it was very helpful because I was able to continue on with the project. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember <coughs> a few weeks ago when you <coughs> came to a, to, came to me with the emergency permit. And made if, it was, if it wasn't for all the snow, it would have happened sooner, and it would have known sooner. You know, and the, all the eggs would have been, the ducks would have been in a row, or whatever. You know, so uh, all right, it's, it, it's a big inconvenience. You know, I can imagine. So if um, it'll be on YouTube. At some point, <laughs> we're videotaping the whole, it, the whole show. It's never good when you're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, you know, my point is, is yeah. being in the field and stuff, I'm just pointing out to Ivy, where, you know, for shoddy contractors and, and, you know, and this is something, I'm a contractor. I didn't see it. How do you see that? How do you see you it? Know, yeah. You don't see that. You know? And yeah, just yeah. all of a sudden, when it starts to fail, you know, you just don't know, you know. So uh, it happens to a lot of people, but you know, uh, uh, you know, the reason for the whole show, if you want to talk about it, you know, is to let other people know, watch out for bad contractors, because this is what can happen to them. Um, if I may suggest, I would like to request that the commission act upon um, confirmation of the issuance of oh, yeah. the emergency certification prior to a, to the commission then uh, considering <coughs> a vote on on the issuance of uh, the permit for the overall project since since work has already proceeded under the emergency <coughs> certificate all right so first we need a vote to confirm the issuance. issuance oh thank you to confirm the issuance of you might as well keep that because okay. it'll be a good He's reference. Gonna real one. You're going to get the real one, <laughs> just in case you have a question before you do. Um, I need to sit. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah, please, definitely sit. Um, so uh, first we need a vote to confirm the issuance of the emergency permit for the demolition. Which was dated March 14th. Okay, dated March 14th. Or excuse 14th. me, it was dated March 15th, I'm sorry. Dated March 15th. Season the site visit. Yeah, okay. Uh, do I have that motion? So moved. Second. 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 And all in favor? Aye. 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 And all against? And the motion carries. And then we need a... Let's see, what do we need? I'm sending that around for signatures. Okay. Since we we'll just do that before I get moved on it. And let me just peruse and I'll give you the recommendation in regard <coughs> to... Um, for a determination which is within a wetland resource area but not in a wetlands protection act resource area it'd be a positive determination number five with conditions and number six confirming that the worker activity is not in a wetlands protection act state resource area so it's positive five and six so this would be a positive of a motion to Issue, issue a positive, positive determination option, option number five and with special six. conditions yeah. as stated in the memo and uh, six. number six also. Can I ask, just ask you to read the first part of what you just read. It sounded like the opposite of what, what I understand is happening here, but maybe my misunderstanding about well, it's, something it's a, and something it's not. A, it's so. a positive determination that this activity is occurring in a local bylaw jurisdictional resource area. Okay. Right. And also a positive <coughs> determination that the work is not occurring within a Wetlands Protection Act or state okay. regulated resource right. area. Which is the number six. Which is number six. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> so do I have that? I forget where we work. Do I have that motion? motion. Move. And is there a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 And all Aye. against? 
<laughs> I'm gonna get a vote. But yeah. <laughs> That's the first time it's happened in 20 years. <laughs> <coughs> and if there's one thing we're sure of, you're not gonna put any refrigerators in that. No, 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 no. Refrigerators. Uh, listen, refrigerators. I, I may well, be pulling you, some out. Yeah, that's <laughs> you may be pulling some out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's terminology. I think that they actually buried all the debris from, from the, the refrigerators. Uh, probably construction of the house there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. The refrigerators. You, know, you can actually problem. see under the foundation where we excavated. You can see under my family room, and I I, I was pulling out like pieces of two by four and scrap and stuff that's you know deteriorated. Yeah. Uh, and me being a builder and stuff, I know what I'm looking at. You know, so, yep. who knows what I'm going to find in there? Probably, you know, scraps of drywall that's all deteriorated. You know, it's just, they, they basically dumped everything there. Lumber and stumps is what we basically yeah, all the cut off from the end. Because now, it's cheaper than getting rid of it properly. The topography of Mr. Weatherby's site <coughs> is actually conducive to basically containing most material on his site based on where he's excavating. It's actually the low point both in from the street and from the back <coughs> backyard. The property actually rises up okay. when it goes to any of the abutters. There is um, conditions in here for using erosion control if it's appropriate, but actually probably, and I talked to Mr. Weatherby about this, probably the most important thing is in regards to vehicle tracking and possibly pulling sediment from well, the most of the, um, most of the uh, as I told Brent on a site visit, uh, most of the truck traffic is going to be on my driveway. So there's really not going to be anything tracked through the street. Right. And my bond driveway is all stone anyway. Okay. And we've already cleared all the loom out and and my plan is to put down, you know, like tons of hay just to, just for the mud because it is mud season, let's mm -hmm. face it, you know. Oh, it's not much I can do about Mother Nature. You mean back behind the driveway where you're actually working? Yes. Yeah. 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 And the other thing that we also ask uh, for anybody doing work within our groundwater protection recharge area mm -hmm. is that you have materials for spill containment in case any of the equipment uh, okay. leaks any. So if you've got absorbent pads yeah. or you know okay. speedy drive yeah. or whatever you just to, to have that available yeah. which you I may have in your too. shop anyway <laughs> so well yeah yeah, yeah. Of course. and so if i may may i make copies yes, of uh, both uh, signed documents for mr weatherby well we certainly wish you luck mr weatherby i wish we could do more to help you <laughs> but we can't and if it wasn't for good luck i wouldn't have any luck at all mm -hmm. As a positive statement, I should say. Do you know if the, do you know when these houses were built? You probably do know. Uh, <coughs> I think my house there. was built in like 82. 82, mm -hmm. it's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I think it was common practice to bury everything, but most of them would be buried on the property line. You know, who would bury anything right beside a house, you know, thinking that, you know, of course someone might want to add, put an atom on a swimming pool it's or just, you yeah. name it. It's just easier because they just had to take one more. Just shoddy contract. It really is. Yeah. 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 And, and I've always been myself a quality builder, so, <laughs> you know, it's just a shame. But God gave it to me because he knew I could handle it. <laughs> Where do you do yeah. most of your work? Uh, in Boston right now, mostly. And this is just the emergency certificate that's been signed by all the commissioners. Very good, thank you. Yeah, I, mostly in Boston now. It's mostly small work, but I've done uh, you know, tons of residential work and stuff like that. And, you know, and the thing that kills me, if I was the excavating contractor there and I bumped into them stumps, I'd be looking at a huge extra, you know? Yeah. Either take it out or don't put the house. I don't care. You're going to pay me either way. Yeah. You know, it just it just makes, you know, it makes us crazy, my brother and I, you know, because he's an excavating contractor also, right. you know? Yeah. 
So it makes us crazy thinking about, wow, they, they could have actually made more money instead of, yeah. you know, they'd dig it out, you know. So, yeah, all right, no, you am, right. I, am I all set? You are all set. Thank, Thank you very much, you. folks. Right. I appreciate it. Um, all right, good luck. Yeah. Certainly. You're welcome. <coughs> Thank you from us, Brent, for shuffling in alone. Chairman, Mr. Vera is here. Um, hello, Mr. Vera. All right, this is the uh, 815 item, which is related to the 830 item. The 815 item is <coughs> an enforcement order for 406 Haverhill Street, map 14, parcel 34, James Vera, owned by Gateway 2 Realty Trust of 1997, failure to employ appropriate erosion control for stockpiled sediments. Failure to prevent sediment discharge to swale and catch basin, which discharges to bordering vegetated wetlands and outlet. Uh, failure to employ appropriate dewatering and sediment management when installing an irrigation well and dumping and discharge of sediment and tailings all in the 100 foot buffer zone to the BBW and the groundwater protection area zone 2, resulting in approximately 1,200 square feet of disturbance and sedimentation of those resources to distinct areas. Um, Mr. Vera, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, Brent, maybe you could start by, because uh, we've already had a discussion of what you saw the last time, you could start by updating us on what the site conditions are. Right. <coughs> um, well, Mr. Vera immediately contacted the office upon receipt of the enforcement order, and Mr. <coughs> Mr. Coughlin also contacted me. And the commission had requested through the enf enforcement order that <coughs> uh, the resource area alterations um, be corrected and the resource areas be returned to their original condition. We had asked for a restoration plan to be submitted by March 18th. And we had also uh, requested the attendance at, at tonight's meeting and we had set um, an overall uh, deadline for uh, restoration to be completed by April 15th, trying to anticipate weather and stuff. So, as I said, uh, Mr. Vera came right in and I received um, a proposed restoration strategy, which was to basically hand, hand remove uh, by scraping the uh, sediment plumes, uh, the pile of debris on 406 Haverhill Street uh, was removed. Um, the, the chunks that, that um, Commissioner Delmonico describes as cuttings, those are actually pieces of the firewood that the patio furniture folks had had um, scattered about the property. So really? they're not Pile they're not broken well good. casings or anything. Oh, no. Well, no, I, I they, didn't think they're that. They're pieces of firewood. Yeah, he'd be taking Chumps. that back, you know. Well, right, but I'm just I'm just saying it's actually from the casual furniture place that had <laughs> firewood in there, not not from uh, the well activities. No. So, the, um, so the debris pile next to the road um, in the right-of-way that was discharging sediments into the swale and the catch basin and going under the street. That's been all cleaned. Uh, it's been mulched. Um, at 406 Haverhill Street, most all of the sediment has been scraped up. There's still a small pile. Um, there's a photograph I went over there to <coughs> check today. Um, most of the sediment plume area has been uh, had the discharge sediments uh, removed from it and leaf litter and other woody debris to naturalize the area has been scattered so it looks it looks very very natural and you probably never ever know if you know we, we if you hadn't been on the site you probably wouldn't uh, be able to actually focus in on on where uh, this had occurred so but there is a little bit left to do yes as we as we talk today so 
um, probably as a good guess, the uh, April 15th uh, completion uh, deadline, you know, barring some April Fool's Day blizzard or something, uh, you probably should okay. be able to get that because most of all the sn snow cover has receded. Pretty much gone there's by still now. some in there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that's status of 406 Haverhill. Right. Uh, I didn't read the second enforcement order. Maybe I should do that just for the record. Yeah, why don't you um, just read it? Because it's all the same. Talk about that a little bit. Too. So this is the, the next item, the 830 item. This is an enforcement order regarding 141 Newburyport Turnpike, Map 14, Parcel 16, James Vera, owned by Gateway 2 Realty Trust of 1997, <coughs> failure to employ appropriate dewatering and sediment management when installing irrigation well, and dumping and discharge of sediment and tailings all in the 100-foot buffer zone to the BBW and groundwater protection area zone 2, resulting in approximately 200 square feet disturbance and sedimentation of those resource areas. So what did you see at um, what has been going on at 141 Newbury Park? Well, I believe that is all that is all done, correct? Yeah, yeah. that's what I was saying. Uh, there's a little bit of snow cover in there. I actually took these pictures, so I can't. I can't tell. <laughs> in other words, I see no traces of the sediment plume. Okay. Uh, down there. There's more northern exposure, so the sun is still. I mean, yeah. the snow is so still. So there's still a little there. snow cover on there, but again, the point is that no. even where the snow cover isn't, it's um, okay. he replaced the leaf litter and stuff, um, and so it looks all naturalized and it is restored as per um, uh, commission's um, uh, directive or. Stipulations, excuse me. So, how did you end up getting that out of there by hand, basically? Five gallon bales. Five gallon, yeah. 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 That was a little, that was a smaller area. Right. Too. It was more confined. Not that it made it any better, but. Okay. Was, Your drillers must have been happy. I'm sorry? Your drillers must have been happy. <laughs> Most of them. <it> yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, So, sounds like um, April. The April date is still a realistic date to have this all wrapped up. Yes, you, you think so too. Just weather pending. That's unless we have yeah. some big weather event. Right, right. But that's to a twenty yeah. days from now plus. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, anything else we need to be concerned about here? Looks like we're all heading in the right direction. Uh, no, we're definitely heading in the right direction. So at this point in time, my recommendation would be for the commission to vote confirmation of both <coughs> enforcement orders since the uh, timelines, deadlines, or whatever in them seem realistic. Okay. Uh, and, and, and technically, I would like to have the snow melt just so I can, sure. can see all of the impacted area at 141. Uh, but basically, the status of that is just upon visual confirmation to consider that that's been appropriately addressed and, and I'll issue a letter um, stating that, you know, that the um, applicant has returned, or excuse me, the um, situation, the violation has returned to compliance, um, yeah, which, well, is our, which is our, our means of, yeah. of issuing a completion on an enforcement order. <clears throat> right. Well, I'm think it's realistic to hope that snow won't be there by April 16th. Yeah. And so, um, what, what would you like to add, Mr. Vera, anything? No. Okay. All right, well, we appreciate you coming in. We appreciate your prompt response to this. Um, and uh, as long as we, we, as long as you finish that up by that date and everything looks good, Brent will sure. issue a letter and that should be the end of it. Okay. Um, I think the only vote we need today is to confirm the issuance of the two enforcement orders from the last meeting. Yeah. So do I have a motion to um, confirm the enforcement orders for 406 Haverhill Street and 141 Newbury Park Turnpike? So move. And is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? And carries? So good. Looks like we're good to go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, good night. And uh, good night. there won't be any need for you to come back, pre presuming that all gets done that way. Okay. We don't need okay. to see you again. What I'll do is, you know, when I get it, the rest of it cleaned up, I'll yeah, give you a call. Yeah, just let me know. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you.
Okay. That brings us to the last agenda item, which is a nine o'clock item, um, which is the continued consideration of a possible gift of land off Newbury Court Turnpike, Map 14, Parcel 22, from the estate of Elizabeth B. Cook as conserved open space land consisting, <coughs> allegedly consisting, of 1.99 acres. Um, I have nothing new to report on that. I don't know, if Brent, if you've heard anything from Council. Yes, you I, I'm sorry, I sent around an email mm. <coughs> in regards oh, to that. I'm sorry, then, I didn't see it. Um, so in a conversation with Judy Pickett Town Council, uh, Town Council recommends that the Commission on any gift of land have a title search completed and obtained a survey plan from which, and I misspelled meets and bounds again, but anyway, can be uh, derived. And this is only a strong recommendation, not a mandated requirement. <coughs> well. I will undertake to <coughs> communicate that position to Attorney Ross um, and um, report back at the next meeting. But my expectation is he would say that he is, his client is not willing to pay the cost of a title examination and a survey. Yeah. So. Tom Council estimated, you know, I, I told her I've been able to access uh, three deeds back to 1957, I think it was, and they all had the same verbiage description mm -hmm. on there, which was not specific with measurements or anything. She said in, you know, that a title search could cost approximately $700. She just gave her <coughs> as an off-the-cuff right. estimate, you know, not a hard and fast quote for anything. <coughs> of course, the other consideration is to look at the abutting properties and find out whether there's, I mean, uh, any, any any effort would take some time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, I believe the idea is, is that where land is concerned that you basically need a good foundation and a good description of <coughs> your asset and that if you don't have a good description of your asset then you're, you're subject to not really knowing just exactly what it is you, you really, quote unquote, have or own, and plus without a clear title, you also don't know whether there's any issues in, in that regards. Yeah, I mean, I think the title is probably clear, mm -hmm. you, so you own it, you just right. don't know what you own, yeah. which is sort of like not owning it. This is a separate parcel from the, from the property itself. To the main part that was on, or is it, or is it linked? This is not contiguous with the, um, the property that Mr. Hurley bought. Right. That's been before us. That was part of the same estate. It would be useful to have an in, make an inquiry of the assessor to see how much <coughs> taxes they're assessing this little piece, if any. <coughs> I think um, Mr. Ross's client is going to Whatever those taxes are, they're going to stop paying them. What means the town will eventually end up with all come, the come to own it know. for whatever it is, and then <coughs> I suppose transfer it to conservation because there's nothing else to do with it. So we may end up in the same spot, but I think I should have that conversation with Mr. Ross just so that we're um, open with him about the choices here. <coughs> Brent, when did you send that memo? Uh, I think we had March twenty first meeting. Yeah. No, yeah. that wasn't. Like, no. No. no, it wasn't before the no. no, last. No, last meeting. Last meeting, I was March twenty first. Okay, yeah. I'll have to go back through my email. I must have just missed it. All right, so I would suggest we continue the further consideration of this until the meeting of April 16th, at which time I will have spoken to Mr. Ross 
and perhaps you can check Brent with the assessors and find out what the taxes are. Mr. Turner's question. That's good. Is that a copy that I can have? But you can have it. <laughs> so move. Um, and this is a motion to continue to the April 16th meeting. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? The motion carries. <coughs> All right, is there anything? Well, status reports, permits, and enforcement. Um, I think. Well, report. actually, there's the budget. Oh, budget. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, let me close that. This is a little different, though. We approved a flat funded budget, am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was yes, that I was, we just approved. I was directed <coughs> to submit a level funded budget. No. Um, so actually recently, apparently, oh shoot. Um, <coughs> the personnel committee had um, engaged a study by a consultant of a survey of municipal compensation. Um, I guess in the North Shore area, I really don't know what the geographic um, extent or, or limits of the survey was, but it was a, in a survey conducted independently of the personnel board and then reported to them, and they reported to the selectmen. And I can't tell from the glare, I don't remember. It may have been their meeting of. <coughs> 15th or something, the glare is really bad up there. So anyway, the selectmen uh, accepted the, the study with the recommendation that um, the non-union compensation schedule for the town of Raleigh be adjusted. Uh, so I was informed and requested on, I think, the 19th or so, I was requested to submit a revised budget um, and I was given a new step compensation schedule uh, that amounted to the Conservation Commission agent wages being increased 9.8%. Right. And that's the budget that we have here. Right. So uh, I was instructed to submit that and I and I inquired as to whether this increase in salary um, would possibly need to be positively um, advocated for at the FinCom meetings. And I was told that this was um, at the authorized by the selectmen and that no, we didn't need to necessarily feel that it was something we were putting forth and this is it's referred to as a step a step program and that apparently there's other positions that this is going to be a progressive thing to um, raise the uh, non-union compensation uh, rates for various positions to be in line with what other uh, municipal and entities are are paying their staff. All right. What was that percentage again? Nine point nine point eight percent. It should be calculated right out on the yeah, it's page one. There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any commissioner wish to comment? My my only question is how is this funded? It, it, is there? A, I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Because we have contributed. I don't know what the selectmen have in mind with that. Um, yeah. I, I read, well, that's, that's I read what you just re related. I read the yeah. newspaper. I wasn't at the meeting. Um, so I don't know what their, their plan is, but what you said is consistent with my understanding, which is it's sort of a, you might say, a package <coughs> deal. It's yeah. something the selectmen requested a study on, and they're implementing the re findings of the study, and this is the result. So, um, uh, you know, uh, the only thing I would say is, in my opinion, the, the raise is uh, well-deserved in that whatever um, 
whatever the level of compensation for similar positions, you certainly deserve to be compensated as well as similar positions in similar towns. How, how long has our budget been little funded? Um, looks to me here. So we use so level funded in eleven from eleven to twelve. There was actually a year when it decreased. It Right. Uh, yeah, before. Half a percent. That was, the, uh, I think, 10. I think, yeah. From, <clears throat> I think from 10 to 11, it decreased slightly. 11 to 12, uh, what I'm reading yeah. here is it was level funded. Well, and I think Actually, that no, excuse me, it was slightly decreased. No. No, no. Um, yes, it was. It was slightly decreased from 11 to 12. Very small amount. Then it's slightly... Yeah. Um, increased in fiscal year 13 and then yeah. uh, but only very slightly and, it, and it's possible that that um, <coughs> yeah there was a certain year and I know that Sam was referring to that that I came to you and because the only <coughs> place to decrease our budget was on the wage line because the expense line can't um, already isn't right. really sufficient for for operating res expenses, but we've held the line on that, so to speak. And the only so reason that I was a year that the commission authorized an, yeah, an amount of the NOI dedicated monies to, to, right. um, to be utilized so that my wages didn't, didn't effectively true. decrease. That's right. <coughs> Although the budget. My reason for bringing that up, I just wanted to get it on the record that, that it's been several years since there's been any net increase in your compensation and so <coughs> the percentage amount might seem high to some folks but it's 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 a really a catch-up situation that is useful when you contrast that to some of the <coughs> union situations such as yeah. the school system <coughs> where you get automatic increases every year or, or over a three-year period that uh, it really discriminates against the non-union people right yeah well um, let's keep an eye on this. Uh, I, we, we can vote on it. I, I will put it to a vote in a minute, but I would suggest that we all keep an eye on it. And if it appears that it needs an advocate in the FinCom level or at the town meeting or at any point, we need to consider um, stepping up to do that, in my opinion. Um, that's a decision we can all make at that point, but let's make sure that we keep our finger on the pulse politically. I think Sam's question is a good question, is where is this money coming from? I think it's going to be raised at <coughs> town meeting if it isn't raised sooner. Um, but good for the moment, the question of whether it's appropriate to um, support it is the only question. So do I, and any, anyone else have any comments? Do I have a mo, let's see, what do we need to do here? Uh, to approve the budget request, revised <coughs> revised budget yeah. request. What do we do? Maybe last a time? confirmation. I'm I'm trying to remember what yeah. we. Have. I think we Actually, approved. We just um, how did I phrase that? We just did, we just did. <laughs> <laughs> just approved did those it. minutes. What did I say? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What did I say? <laughs> Reading the grammar. Not uh, uh, except the proposed draft. Budget as presented. That's how we phrased it. Was all right. I mean, the selectman is the chief executive body, and kind of following their direction in regards. Right. To right. I mean, it's not our. We don't have authority. We don't have the prerogative to necessarily right. say we want to. But we. Um, so I would need a motion to accept the the revised, revised draft budget. <laughs> revised draft department budget request. Um, Dated 3 2013. Do I have that motion? So moved. And is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And all against? And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I'm trying to keep. Um, I'm trying to keep informed as to when the FinCon might be meeting and the meeting that they actually. <coughs> discuss our budget yeah and also in preparation for that um, Jean our, our senior Jean Blanchard our senior assistant and I have been working on categorizing the um, expense line um, 
I hadn't categorized it the last number of years because it was just flat and not changing. So, so I've been working with her to uh, develop some categories to just, in case I'm asked to explain, you know, just dis the disbursement of expenses and, and also to mention um, that the commission utilizes some of the notice of intent monies to actually supplement that used for some of our communication expenses and they're used for postage, uh, especially the amount of documents that we have to send out certified return receipt at six and a half dollars a, a letter. Um, what, what was the name of that thing column woman we met with? Do you remember? Um, her first, <coughs> first name I believe was Karen, I think. I'd have to look up. Maybe you could send me an email. Thank you. Sure. Where are those meetings? Boston? No. Town Hall. Right. Oh, it's in Town Hall? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't even know if they're televising them or not. They may be televising them. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. 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 One tomorrow. There's one tomorrow? Yeah. one tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the uh, TV operator knows the schedule of the town meetings better than anybody else because he has to be at them now. I was talking the other day. Was uh, where is it held? In, in town hall or in this building? In, in the yeah. I think it's in the select one's office. Yeah. I was talking the other day with somebody, casual conversation uh, with someone from the town of Newbury, and, and they were speculating that Newbury's budget is going to be adversely impacted by all the things that have been going on in Plum Island, despite the fact that the news reports suggest that the homeowners are responsible for, for most of it or all of it. And we also talked about the fact that there are going to be a lot of people on Plum Island probably filing for tax abatements. That is true. Now that's not going to affect Raleigh, but it's going to affect Newbury and possibly Newburyport. And all of that may have feedback. Um, impacts with regard to the school budgets, and yeah. so you know how budgets look now may be may be significantly changed. Um, the other thing I learned in the last few days is that is that uh, David Peterson is not going to be running for a lot of department, but he is running for the selectman's position that Stuart Galzell is vacating and has agreed, and in turn has agreed to run for the water department position. <laughs> so, oh. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Glad they got that straightened out. So Dave Peterson wants to be a selectman again? Yeah. yeah. I had the distinct impression he had enough of that. Right. The last time. He told me yesterday that. <clears throat> but good, I'm Debbie, glad. Debbie said she sure would wish, wish him to rejoin the board. Well, I, <laughs> I agree with that, but yeah. I didn't think he wanted to. So. Okay. All right. Anything else, Brent? Yes. I received a phone call Monday from um, Andrea Norton with Mass Highway or Mass DOT in regards to um, their desire to seek permitting from the commission to restore the flow in a clogged culvert that is down near Forest Ridge. So I went, <coughs> had a quick site visit this morning. Um, this is right across from, is that the right thing? Yep, Winfrey Fudge and the all Time Fitness, I think, is their name. Mm -hmm. Anytime, um, Anytime Fitness. Yeah. Anytime Fitness. The front Thank building in yeah. Coughlin's. Right. Thing. So there's a catch basin which actually um, shows up on the uh, aerial pictometry and it goes to a culvert outlet on the opposite side, the undeveloped side of the street, which has a little growth of Phragmites and is almost uh, clogged by anywhere from 8 to 10 to 16 inches of sediment as well as in, is suffering from the embankment leading down to it having severe erosion problems. <clears throat> so 
I kind of shamelessly used that opportunity to ask if she would accompany me um, after we looked at this situation and I said, yep, that certainly uh, could stand your attentions in um, cleaning it out and, res and uh, restoring unrestricted flow. And I said, um, how would you like to come with me up by up by Dunkin' Donuts. <clears throat> because when I had inspected uh, Mr. Tony Annis's development there, which hadn't gotten um, <coughs> certificate of compliance for the order of conditions that allowed the construction of where the gym is, Dunkin' Donuts, storage <coughs> facility, um, off the vine, or whatever, I noticed that there's a culvert there that actually forms the hydraulic connection between the wetlands between the UPS store leading into Batchelder Meadow and McDonald's and then the wetlands that are between the um, that little trinket shop that's next to the Agawam Diner Sunburst. and uh, Sunburst, right. and the uh, uh, Mr. Annis's development. So the embankment there is severely eroded on the Dunkin' Donuts side of the roadway. It's also eroded, and in fact, we believe this tree or its multi, multi-stem tree is actually growing on top of the headwall of the partially restricted outlet of the culvert on the other side, and utilizing the plans that have been drawn up for the proposed water pipeline to go down that route that was proposed by um, Meridian under Mr. Coughlin's initiative a number of years ago. Um, so that that is in fact supposed to have a connection there. And on this side, <coughs> the mound of sediment is 18 inches above the top of the head wall. Really? And because of, that come from? Because of uh, hydrostatic pressure, oh. it's clean, it's water can come out but it can't go anywhere because of all this mounted sediment. It can't actually make it into the wetland system. And actually, technically, the water on the off the vine Dunkin' Donuts side is actually supposed to flow because, as we know, there's no outlet over by Mr. Coughlin's development, 406 Hafel Street. Right. The wetland system in there actually flows towards Batchelder Brook. Flows the other way. And Batchelder Mel it's Meadow. Supposed to flow the other and way. it can't because of all these sediments. This is supposed to be bordering vegetated wetlands here. You can actually see the head wall right yeah. there. Yeah. There, Like I said, there's a mound of sediment in front of there that looks like a dog has just been been building it up. And the water during the Mother's Day flood did flow the opposite direction of, from where it's supposed to. It actually flowed out of Batchelder Meadow and went across the roadway there. So this is this is off the vine here. Right? This is off yeah. the vine this here. The Dunkin' Donuts gym. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. they're on this side. Yeah. I see so the here. water is supposed to flow this way. They're supposed to be bordering vegetated wetlands there, but there's so much sediment that there's actually this big delta of sediment that actually blocks any water leaving that wetland system and flowing the way it's supposed right. to. You want to put it all in my backyard? So did uh, Mass DOT so take an interest in this? Yes. So <laughs> she is investigating okay. uh, the possibility of incorporating it into a dual filing. Sure. Because um, they're right down the road from each other. And actually, there's there's at least two areas <coughs> over here. The embankment severely. <coughs> And they put the wrong size riprap. They put one to three inch riprap when it's they should have been there. using three to six yeah. um, over there. So, and and in fact, somebody had even scraped it. Um, somebody had scraped, so there was all this, like somebody had taken a, a snow scraper shovel and pushed it down. There's this big, like, curled, loose road sand and stuff just waiting to plop right into the wetlands over there. Which must be where it came from, yeah. or where it has been coming from, well, pushed off the road. There are supposed to be curb cuts there for water to flow down, but the bank isn't stabilized. I mean, they're supposed to go into a stabilized riprap area. And so... Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Well, that's so... 
So trying to work together with Mass DOT and <coughs> and you know bring these areas to their attention, and I'm going to provide them with contact information for Mr. Ames <coughs> because the according to the plans, the right of way, the edge of the right of way is like only six inches off the head wall of the culvert, and the area of sediment that needs to be cleaned up is in an approximate 12 foot diameter circle. Um, in front of there, so uh, no, they're going to talk to Mr. Hannes no, about it's on hey, Hannes's it's land. It's on his his land, and of course, it would okay. be hit to his benefit if there is unrestricted hydraulic connection across there. Sure. As well as, I think they will also attend to this destabilization um, of the embankment on his side, on the Dunkin' Donuts yeah, side. I would think so because because again, good. there's curb cuts there, but it's just eroding. I mean, yeah. those are 12 foot, uh, 12 foot. Uh, eroded rills and cuts in there. And that's just going to destroy their road. Well, and that's just pushing the sediment <coughs> right down in front of that culvert and restricting it to begin yep. with. So. And eventually their road and guardrail is going to start falling in. Yes. And they don't like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump to it. Anything else you want to bring up, Frank? Yes. I, um, I have a question for sure. you. Mm -hmm. Might be the thing you're about to bring up, which is what's the where's the the water department application of 47 Kathleen Circle? Where does that question stand? Well, actually, I wasn't going to bring that up, but <laughs> I verbally well, we received a submittal, um, which I conveyed to them did not address um, the issue <coughs> of permission by the Board of Selectmen for, uh, you know, a town-initiated project, nor did it answer the question as to whether the town would have any rights to the easement that they're <coughs> choosing to use. And they said, well, we think John Coughlin has rights to it. And I said, well, again, <coughs> that's not in my zone of expertise, but right. at this point in time, a municipal application needs to be um, authorized and approved by the Board of Selectmen. And that was what was Debbie's feedback yes. on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's where yeah. that stands. I and just want to... So, so, well, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. So Charlie Weir, the engineer with Meridian, <coughs> verbally told me that they were going to withdraw um, that application until things got sorted out, but I have not. I told them I they could just do that by email or whatever, yeah. but I've not received any written communications actually withdrawing the application. And I, I said, we, the co representing the commission, I said, we still believe it's administratively incomplete, lacking okay. the appropriate permission for a municipal application. I just, the reason I well, brought up the question, since it's not on the agenda, is that I wonder if you remember and if there is uh, if town council remembers that in 2007, um, what's the gentleman who owns the large parcel, Ash? I've forgotten his name. Ash B. Ash. The one that the main part of the. Right. You, you know who I mean? Yes, I do. The, I he sued in land court all of the residents of Kathleen Circle to try to get access across this very same. Land. Well, actually, all the property owners. Yeah. It included the town of Raleigh and, the and town us enough. because yeah. of our open space right. parcel there. Um, and the question of access was exactly what that lawsuit was addressing. I just am wondering, and we don't need to know today, but I want town council to remember that this happened. I wonder what the result of that lawsuit was. If that had given him access across Kathleen Circle, across that lot to Kathleen yeah. Circle. I don't think we'd be having this conversation about yeah, um, it, rather obscure easement rights that That are suit got sort of resolved real. somehow. Well, but, most of it's, it's... But I don't know how because we weren't right. really a direct participant. Right, it's six years ago, so something must have happened. Yeah. So it just, it, I had forgotten that, but I came across it mm -hmm. when looking for the emails on this. So, okay. As long as it, there's some memory of that having happened, yes, that needs to be connected up. All right. So, what else do you have? Um, just in <coughs> in regards to our question about the open space, um, the potential gift of land 
off of Newbury Port Turnpike in Batchelder's me Meadows, so called. Um, I realized that I didn't have any documentation on what I've come, what I've heard referred to as the Bishop property, the open space parcel that is out in that same area but doesn't directly abut the land that we were earlier talking about here on the agenda. It's, it's one parcel removed um, from that. And I had been told that that was, that that was transferred or, or offered to the legislature um, when the conversion of the small portion on Smith Lane for cell tower usage, because in order for that has to be, a, any Article 97 land has to be approved for conversion, um, both by the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs and by the legislature. And in order to do that, a municipality must show that they're offering either just as much acreage with the same natural resource values or more acreage being dedicated as conservation open space land protected under Article 97. And I realized I couldn't find any paperwork in our office in regards to that. So I've been proceeding to try and find out about that parcel because I also wanted to see if it was described by meets and bounds and et cetera. And so I found the deed and I just received permission today because the only deed I could find says that it's a gift of land grant to the town of Raleigh, doesn't mention the Conservation Commission at all. And I know from past working dealings with town council that there's the insistence that the deed must re reflect that it is under the care and custody of the Conservation Commission and that it's protected uh, Article 97 property. So I've just received today permission to talk to town council because I have not been able, I've found it coming to the municipality, but I haven't found, and I found the warrant articles and everything that authorize it yeah. being protected, but I can't find the actual recorded deed or transference or whatever that actually states <coughs> that. What was the date of that? The date of what? The transference. Yeah. Of the the date of the transference. Roughly. What year? Like 2000. 2004. Yeah. That's right. um, it was, I have the copy of the bill to the legislature um, in the year 2004. Um, May 10th, 2004 article. Um, special town meeting, November 14th, 2004, I believe is where they said it was going to be protected by the Conservation Commission. So, okay. All right. So today I received permission on to find out some more information about that. I also discovered in the same context, I cleaned some files that had been hanging <coughs> around and I found a newspaper article that said the Riley Conservation Commission back in December 17th, 1998, actually facilitated a direct purchase of uh, property owned by the Brothers, uh, the Brothers Estate, or a John W. Brothers, and that Essex County Greenbelt and at least Essex County Greenbelt anyway, possibly contributed some money along with the Conservation Commission. Well, I was perturbed that I only found this newspaper article and couldn't find any trace of the existence of this parcel. Is that I, at the base of Railroad Avenue, perhaps? It's, you know, where, um, like, where Bill Demento's driveway accesses Main Street? Directly across yeah. from Raleigh Salvage, oh. from Don Savory's junkyard. Oh, okay, because the brothers own that's land. that's the parcel. Okay. It's common. It's a combination of salt marsh and transition coastal bank and okay. and a little bit of uplands there. Which side of the road is it on? It's on it's the east easterly east side of the road, okay. the Sound or yes. Ocean Side. Yes. Mento side. On yeah. Mento <coughs> side. So what I have found is that. The deed only states the following. 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Consideration of $11,500, grants to the town of Rowley, blah, 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 having place of business acting through and by its conservation commission. Doesn't contain any verbiage about being protected as dedicated open space or being protected under Article 97. So I received permission to submit this deed to town council to ask if this, in fact, actually provides it with adequate protection um, for it being designated as open space. Because again, it doesn't, it only mentions the conservation commission and doesn't have all the other qualifying chapters and acts that I'm used to town council recommending be expressed in a deed. <coughs> the other thing I discovered is that there is, <coughs> There is a recorded open order of conditions issued to Mr. Brothers for the construction of a boathouse on the property. What's the date of that? What? <laughs> 1920. Um, <coughs> hold on a second. <coughs> I'm to get back to it here. Quid pro quo for the tip for the and I apologize. I like to keep things in chronological order so that I can, can find things again. Um, the order of conditions was issued on um, March 5th, 1998. DEP file number 63-219. <coughs> and I do somewhere in here have proof of recording. So Is that on the same parcel, do you think? It, it, oh, it definitely is on the same par parcel. It answered, it answered the question as to whether there was a plan. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. <laughs> of, of the parcel so that he was described In somewhere. March 98, he applied for and got a permit to build a boathouse. And that is December correct. December 98, nine months later, sold it. Sold he it. sold it to the town for $11,000, not for free. Right. And as I said, according to the newspaper article, actually somehow Essex County Greenbelt supposedly um, Participated also, but I found no record of where the monies came from or anything else yet. Is so, the boathouse ever built? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> my my point in bringing this up. You don't think so? My point in yeah. bringing this up. Yes, there is no structure located on here because even the street address has disappeared because they don't assign street addresses to properties that don't have some type of structure or occupied dwelling on it. So my point in this is to request permission from the commission, since we are now the owners of this property, <coughs> to submit a request for a certificate of compliance so we can declare uh, this issue recorded order as being invalid. I didn't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that makes sense. Um, as well as I will be reporting back also as to rather um, there is something more that needs to be done if the deed doesn't, yeah. in fact. Did you have a concept of where this land is? The description is uh, westerly by Route 1A. Oh, yeah, the drive. Right. That's that one all the way to the river. It doesn't seem to be north and easterly by Rowley Parsonage land. Now we're forming. Yeah, it's like Minister's Woodlot. Minister's Woodlot. Is that down that far? I thought that was a little further. Yeah, this is the other before way. Minister's Woodlot. Oopsie. And then southerly by land of Conant and others. Let me oh, give it this back so you don't lose track of it. That's the, okay, so that's a full property. Yeah, that's the full <coughs> parcel right there. This. Field. Demento. Even then. Yeah. Well, it's got to be on some yeah. sort of water to have a boat out. Well, it, it it appears it was for storage. Well, I, I it doesn't appear that there was any I mean, access into the marsh at all. That he was just going to do this yeah. short little driveway and yeah. just utilize it. Keep it close. I mean, Mr. Barnes the Brothers Shizzle. family does exist. Mm -hmm. oh, they have the property <laughs> on the Rowley River, although it's actually in Ipswich. It's the second. House on a knoll on the left, right as you go out. And here's after the yeah, bridge. Okay. Here's old assessor's map showing you the minister's woodlot, right. and then the brothers' realty right. trust. Well, I can see where they'd want to keep their boats there. 
As it is, they go in and out of Carly's, mm. but not very frequently. Mm. Mm. And there's another member of the same family that lives in the first cottage at the end of Railroad Avenue during the summer. There's Ruth Alexander's <coughs> is the next house, and then the third one, mm -hmm. which is now and ha not happening. Can I see that one? But anyway. Just in front of Yeah, I will. Um, what I'm doing on any of our parcels is I access, you know, recent pictometry as well as the recent assessor's maps and I produce uh, PDFs so that we, you know, have a record based on the current understanding and descriptions of the parcels to, you know, to put in the file. As I, as I build a file, basically it's sort of baseline information so that we have, you know, records of our land holdings, which is what I was starting to do on this. Sure. <coughs> So I think that is the minister's woodlot, isn't it? Yeah. And this is what's now Rough Meadows. This this is Patmos Road here, right? Am I, I right in my geography? I think so. This one, yeah. this is Patmos. Um, well, beyond yeah. there. Yeah, but I mean, that's heading, the, heading north. That's, yeah. that's the turn, heading yeah. north. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, you're not looking at it. So this is the minister's woodlot, and this is... That's rough metal. Stackyard. Stackyard stack where and, and then Patmos goes and off. Part division and all that. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Brent, you just ans answered my question from reading the newspaper article when the solar fields are going to be built on the front of Castle <laughs> in Newberry as to why I carried a zero address. Because <laughs> they don't assign numbers. Yeah. 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 That's the uh, yeah, I believe that has to do with the police and the emergency response 911 system is that um, my understanding here is that when anyone goes in to develop a lot, in order to get a street address, they need to go see the uh, police chief. And I think he, in conjunction with the uh, fire chief, uh, make sure that there's no conflicts in regards <coughs> to addresses that they they assign. but. Um, but yeah, they choose not to assign anything um, to a lot, even if the lot appears to have appropriate frontage, if there's no, at least my understanding is that without any type of structure or, or dwelling or anything on it, they don't, they don't start assigning numbers until a number is actually needed for a, for a Yeah, I think until then you use um, parcel numbers, yeah. assessor's parcels. Yeah, how they're described. Yeah. Well, do you need to close that old vote of commissions? Yes, that's what I was asking the commission for, um, was permission to submit a certificate of compliance request that we can declare as invalid. Okay. <clears throat> can we do that now, or are you want to do that? No, we need to. You got to type we, it up. We need to, yeah. and we need to advertise it. And, and Put it on the agenda. Even if it is an administrative act, I'd like to have it on on an agenda. And plus, I'd also like to talk about the deed in case, yes, in case there's something we can incorporate together there. You know, so if we do, because I believe we do have to record it where this order is recorded. And so, therefore, if there's other recording to be accomplished, I, you know, like to. You hit it all at once, so to speak. And that's all I have to report. All right. Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. And is there a second? second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 A